untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm taking a look at a Naya Colored Werewolves deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this particular build of Naya Werewolves goes incredibly large, playing 8 of these 6 mana werewolf bombs that we can potentially cheat into play thanks to our Howl Pack Piper. The 4 mana 2 2 human werewolf from Crimson Vow is uncounterable, and for 1 on a green we can tap and activate it to put a creature card from our hand onto the battlefield. And if that creature is a wolf or werewolf, we can untap the Piper to potentially activate once again. And then we can only use this at sorcery speed, but using the Piper's ability is also an excellent way for it to transform from daytime to nighttime, as we wouldn't have cast any spells that turn. And then it transforms into Wild Song Howler, a 4 4 that when it enters a battlefield or transforms, lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library, and then we can reveal a creature card from among them to put into our hand, so it can help us find more action. And then the 6 mana creatures we want to cheat into play include Avabrook Caretaker, a 4-4 mythic rare human werewolf with hexproof, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on another target creature you control. And then at night it transforms into Hollow Henge Huntmaster, a 6-6 with hexproof, saying other permanents you control have hexproof. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on each creature you control. So this card is completely insane at night. And then we also have the full playset of Tovalar's Huntmaster, a 6-6 that is joined by a pair of 2-2 green wolf creature tokens, and at night transforms into Tovalar's pack leader, a 7-7 that when it enters a battlefield or attacks, generates a pair of 2-2 green wolf creature tokens, and for 4 mana another target wolf or werewolf we control fights target creature we don't control. So especially at night, the pack leader also has a lot of synergy with the Hollow Henge Huntmaster, being able to put two counters on all those wolf tokens will quickly decimate the opponent. And we could potentially put both of these into play as early as turn 4 in this deck, since we have some 2 mana acceleration, we could cast a turn 3 Piper, and then turn 4 if we're lucky activate this twice, put both Caretaker and Huntmaster into play, and then it will transform to night time to completely take over the game and I've managed to pull that off a few times during testing. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana, full playset of Spikefield Hazard, giving us some cheap interaction, especially against a mono white aggro deck, which has a lot of 1 toughness creatures, and then we can also play it as a tap land, since we do want to get up to 6 mana sometimes to hard cast our bombs. Then at 2 mana we've got 3 copies of Thalia, the 2-1 legendary human, with first strike saying non-creature spells cost 1 generic mana more to cast. So this is symmetrical and it also affects us, but given that Spikefield Hazard is the only non-creature spell in our deck, it's mostly going to impact the opponent, can be very effective against opposing control strategies and epiphany combo decks. Then we also have the full playset of Casting Naturalist, a 2-2 human werewolf that when it attacks adds a red or green to our mana pool that doesn't go away until the very end of our turn. And then at night transforms into Lord of the Olvenwald, a 3-3 giving other wolves and werewolves we control plus one plus one, and has that same mana ability. And then it might seem strange, but we're playing three copies of Katilda in this deck, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one legendary human with protection from werewolves, so we cannot even target it with our caretaker during daytime as it has protection from the caretaker. But then human creatures we control can tap to add one mana of any of this creature's colors to our mana pool. And most of our werewolves, of course, are going to be human on the front side, so they can all contribute towards potentially casting or more expensive spells if we don't draw the Piper. And they can also potentially help activate Katilda's ability. For six mana we can tap her to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control. So that's another nice mana sink ability that also lets it potentially transform to night time as we didn't cast any spells that turn. Then at 3 mana we've got a full playset of Brutal Cathar, the 2-2 human werewolf is the main removal spell in the deck, as when it enters a battlefield or transforms into Brutal Cathar, we can exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield, so it can potentially exile multiple creatures from the opponent if we can keep switching between daytime and nighttime. And at night it will be a Moonrage Brute, a 3-3 werewolf with first strike and ward making the opponent pay 3 life if they want to target it. Then we've got two copies of Reckless Stormseeker, a 2-3 giving a creature we control plus one plus so and haste at the beginning of combat. And that's an excellent way to be able to attack with some of our more expensive werewolves right away, especially at night with the Tovalar's pack leader. Being able to attack and make an extra pair of wolf tokens is going to be quite powerful. 
and then at night the Stormseeker transforms into Stormcharged Slasher, a 3-4 giving a creature plus 2, plus 0, Trample and Haste until end of turn instead. And then two copies of Tovalar, Dire Overlord, the 3-3 Legendary Human Werewolf, saying whenever Wolf or Werewolf we control deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card, and at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control three or more Wolves and or Werewolves, it becomes Knight, so an excellent way to keep it night time, and still an excellent addition in any Werewolf deck, even if it's not quite as powerful here as it would be in a more low-curve aggressive Werewolf deck, where it's easier to draw cards with the ability and keep it night time, and then at night transforms into Tovalar, the Midnight Scourge, a 4-4 with the same card draw ability, and a nice mana sink for X, green and red. Target Wolf or Werewolf we control gets plus X plus O and gains Trample until end of turn. And then last but not least, two copies of the Volatile Arsonist, a 5 mana 4-4 Human Werewolf with Menace and Haste. When it attacks it deals 1 damage to each of up to 1 target creature, up to 1 target player and or up to 1 target Planeswalker. And then at night transforms into Dire Strain Anarchist, a 5-5 with Menace and Haste with the same ability, now dealing 2 damage instead of 1. And then our mana base doesn't have room for any creature lands since we need all the mana fixing we can get, and we're usually busy casting spells anyway. We've got one of each basic mountain and forest in case of opposing copies of Field of Ruin, then all 12 pathways in our colors, as well as 4 copies of Rockfall Vale, 3 Sundown Pass, and 3 Overgrown Farmland. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's not particularly exciting, we're not ramping into anything, but we can always use Katilda's ability to close out the game. So I'll keep and then play our Sundown Pass, turn two. Got a lot of options up against Mono White. So we could go for Thalia. If I play Katilda next turn, I can double spell. So maybe that's better. Because a naturalist might not have a great attack next turn. So I'll take two. And our opponent's just boasting, so they didn't have any better two drop. And Huntmaster is a great draw, so now we could maybe ramp into it thanks to Thalia and Naturalist providing more mana. Did not have the mana to double Naturalist since we only have single red. Otherwise that could have been better if they deal with Katilda. I could still maybe ramp into Huntmaster next turn by attacking with both Naturalists. So third land, do we see removal for Katilda maybe? And then our opponent's going to be forced to deal with the Huntmaster. And if they do, we'll still have Katilda as a nice mana sink. Spellbinder, I guess, will mess that plan up a little bit as well. So they don't have any attacks. And then we will... Let's see, I guess I could just activate Katilda here. And then how close are we to Huntmaster? Next turn I can still cast it anyway. So yeah, I guess we'll go for a Katilda activation. Although it's interesting. If I activate Katilda, then it's going to transform to Knight. This will no longer be human, so we wouldn't be able to tap for mana with Katilda. Usually it's an advantage for it to be Knight, but here it might not be. So I might be better off just playing the Naturalist instead. So I keep more humans in play. And then hope the opponent cannot remove Katilda. And then... I guess we'll pass, even though I could maybe sneak in an attack with Thalia. Would also mean taking a hit from the Usher. And then even if they do deal with Katilda, the Naturalist could attack to generate mana, which can also help cast Huntmaster. And we've got more 6 drops in the deck we could draw. Spellbinder attacks. And another Spellbinder is going to miss. Alright, so there is double Spellbinder to worry about in this guys. Hopefully we can find like an Arsonist to take care of those. And then for now Huntmaster, probably want to keep Thalia on defense. And actually I might want to attack with Thalia to start applying a bit of pressure since we have the wolf tokens back now anyway. So 
So can we outrace Double Spellbinder? It's going to be a challenge, especially if they have more removal here. But I do have Katilda's ability to rely on. And we could always draw like a Spikefield Hazard or an Arsonist, or let it transform to Nighttime and then use the Huntmaster's Find ability. But a Brutal Cathar going to get rid of the Huntmaster as expected. All right, there's Spikefield Hazard, kills Spellbinder. And then I would still like to activate Katilda, which we can if the Naturalists attack. So we would like for it to transform to Knight if possible, which means not casting the Spikefield Hazard right now, and instead using Katilda's ability. And then we can pass the turn with uh, two mana and Spikefield Hazard available. So let's attack with the two Naturalists and then Maybe I should leave an extra wolf token back and only attack with one of them. And then add double reds. Our opponent chumps. So we'll use Katilda here. And then I'll have an instant speed spikefield hazard available. Portable hole for two mana. Tries to get rid of Thalia or Catilda. Sure. We'll save the attack. Both spellbinders attack. So we're probably killing one of them. And then, yeah, I mean, our opponent's still in trouble here. So opponent packs it in. Didn't even need to show the hazard onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hands. Could use a Piper to cast on turn three, but for now, Hazard on one, Naturalist on two, and then we've got Brutal Cathar for interaction against the green whites. All right, Katilda has protection from Brutal Cathar, so wouldn't be able to exile that. So I need green mana here. Opponent's got their own Brutal Cathar, which I guess will exile. And get our Naturalist back. And then we're starting to get closer to casting our Caretaker. Werewolf Pack Leader into Vanguard as a 5-5. Ward is 2, which I cannot quite pay for here. So I guess we'll just Stormseeker and pass. Next turn I could Brutal Cathar the Hamlet Vanguard. Do I want to try and double block Pack Leader? Don't really expect any combo tricks necessarily, but they could always pump this up to a 5 power creature. So I could double block with Naturalist Stormseeker. And they would maybe trade after having drawn a card. Could be fine. Although Stormseeker giving Caretaker haste could be sort of nice. Yeah, I guess I'll take it for now. And a Thalia we don't really care about. And another Cathar. Alright, so... Caretaker I can only play if Naturalist attacks, which right now would be suiciding into Thalia. So the play might be Brutal Cathar, their Thalia. And then... I can uh, attack and play a second Brutal Cathar, which I guess is reasonable. I 
move the combats. Probably pumping... Doesn't matter too much. This has protection from werewolves, so gonna be able to soak up the biggest attacker. Hoping there's no instant speed fight spells from our opponent. That could be bad. So let's say those two attack. And then I play another Brutal Cathar, Exiling Pack Leader. I guess that's okay. Maybe I want to attack with everyone. And get in 6 damage. And then I'll take the 5 from the Vanguard anyway. And then next turn we can play a Caretaker. Opponent's got two cards in hand. They could use Katilda to pump the Vanguard up to a 6-6. Six, six, and their opponent let it go to Knights, which is going to come back to bite them here, literally. As the Caretaker is going to put two counters on the entire team. Can give it Trample and Haste. Opponent's got to act now before our creatures gain Hexproof, if they want to do anything. Alright, Valor stance gets the Brute, which gets back their Cathar, but it's going to be also Brute, so it doesn't exile anything. So this is still going to be backbreaking. Slasher targets Huntmaster, pumps the team, and I assume we just smash. Opponent's got three blockers, and then they're still dead, plus I could even cast a Spike Field Hazard here before anything else happens. So that was quite a blowout. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands, not amazing, but still a keep. Can play one hazard as a tap land, perhaps, and cast the other if we're facing a creature deck. Been pretty happy with Spikefield Hazard overall. Important to have early interaction, especially against uh, various white aggro decks. And having a lot of lands is good in a deck with so many 6 drops. Alright, Thalia. I could Spikefield Hazard, I suppose. Should probably do it now. In case of any pump spells, I'm not sure. And then next turn I could play a Brutal Cathar. Spellbinder gonna have a look. Probably takes Caretaker, although they could also go for like a Spike Field Hazard, which is a clean answer for Spellbinder. But making our 6 drop cost 8 is usually a good idea. Opponent takes a Spike Field Hazard. Picked up Thalia. Now I won't be able to play Hazard as a land anymore, but I don't hate just killing the Spellbinder with it. And I'll main phase it again in case of any pump spells. Because I didn't really want to trade a Stormseeker for Spellbinder when we have clean answers available. And having Brutal Cathar killed feels pretty bad when they can re-trigger Spellbinder. So it's going to be an Usher into Cemetery Gatekeeper, which exiled Spikefield Hazard, so that's not really going to affect us since we don't have many non-creature spells in the deck. Alright, so what do I want to do here? I guess I could keep a Stormseeker on defense. And that does a pretty good job for now. Also starts the day and night cycle with her opponent's light on spells in hand. Ooh, welcoming vampire, we definitely have to exile here. And glad to draw land. And 
then I'll get to double green sorted, I think. Even though I might need double white if I want a Cathar plus Thali in the same turn. Still probably should go for double green. And I don't think we're attacking. And then we're slowly building up towards our caretaker, which is gonna take care of the game. Alright, found a double white. So, I'm hesitant to play another Brutal Cathar here, since there's no creature I really need to deal with right away. So I'm gonna save it. Stay back. Hopeful initiate, we don't really care about too much. Ooh, Catilda's nice. So that'll give me the mana to play Caretaker. Although I guess I don't have enough green for that to work this turn, so I guess next turn we can make that play. And uh, yeah, I cannot target Catilda with the Stormseeker because it has protection from werewolves, otherwise I might have been able to tap Catilda for mana right away. So Catilda, while a great card in the deck, does have a few nombos between Caretaker and Stormseeker. But uh, I think we'll be just fine. Opponent does have Field of Ruin available. But we do have a basic forest in the deck to fetch up. And now Catilda can also make double green. Luminarch Aspirants, better target for a Brutal Cathar. And a Tovalar as well, so. Got a lot of options, I guess Caretaker plus Tovalar's fine. Hang on to Brutal Cathar as opposed to Exiling Aspirant, which we should still be able to beat. And then Tovalar will switch it to Nighttime next turn. Don't think we're attacking. And Caretaker can target... Um, let's see... Thalia maybe? Or Brutal Cathar, so it doesn't die to burn spell as easily. But we're gonna stay back, and then... Next turn, the Caretaker is gonna... Probably win us the game here, if I had to guess. Can also still use Cotilda. So... Yeah, opponent has seen enough. We were gonna be able to put three plus one counters on all our creatures. And that's game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Could use a Piper to ramp out Caretaker, but Cotilda can also do a decent job. And then we'll lead with Rockfall Veil. Vale. Opponent blue-black into Ludovic. So some sort of graveyard deck should be interesting. And yeah, time for Catilda. And then Tovalar helps us ramp into a turn 4 caretaker with Catilda. And never mind, Witherbloom commands, decent answer here. And at least we've got a backup. Might still be better to play a Tovalar. And then next turn I can double spell. Old stick fingers. Alright, it's already a 5-5, so that blocks my Tovalar quite well. But uh, we'll stick to the plan. Don't think Thalia is going to be particularly effective. Opponent doesn't seem to be playing a lot of non creatures. So I could Stormseeker instead, thanks to Catilda letting Tovalar tap for mana. And then next turn, might be able to play Caretaker. Could have even cast a Hazard here, thanks to Stormseeker making red mana, but no great target for it. Old Rutstein. 
take six. And then we're hoping to transform it to nighttime soon. Brutal Cathar could also be quite good here. Uh, let's see. If I'm careful with how I tap my mana, I can also play Thalia here. So I can give Caretaker Hastes. And then Caretaker puts two counters on. Maybe on Tuvalar. Sure. No attacks, and then Caretaker can tap to help cast Athalia. And then do I want to play Spikefield Hazard? I guess next turn we might want to activate Katilda, which is also a way to let it transform to Knight if Tovalar gets answered here. And then, uh, yeah, next turn we should be good to go. So we've got an impressive board. Google Colors Harvests, making a couple zombies here. And Tovalar transforms it to Knight. So we'll be able to put two counters on the entire team. Can also activate Katilda here. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Got a keepable hand. Facing black whites. So it could be a more controlling deck. Make that Abzan with an innkeeper. Okay. So next turn I could Stormseeker plus Spikefield Hazard potentially. And then better to play Tovalar once we already have a Stormseeker in play. Welcoming Vampire, okay. Can draw them a lot of cards. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna cast Spikefield Hazard, but still better to keep it as an option. So... Play Stormseeker. And attack. Would have been ecstatic with a double block, but Putin probably wants to hang on to their vampire. And depending on the situation, we could kill the innkeeper here. A second vampire, alright. I guess that resolves. And we'll take three. Ooh, Caretaker's looking good too, and I could even cast it right now and give it haste, so that seems worthwhile. And Caretaker pumps Stormseeker as the only option, since Katilda has protection from werewolves. And then next turn, Tovalar will eventually transform it to nighttime if we control three or more werewolves. Cleric triggers Innkeeper as well. So in hindsight, it would have been fine to kill that with a hazard, but could still potentially come up if our opponent tries to like double or triple block, as it could uh, potentially lead to a blowout. I was also expecting the opponent to play Isika's Chariots, and then the one damage could have uh, potentially killed a Chariot after it takes three from Tovalar or Stormseeker. Luckily, Vampire only triggers once each turn. Same goes with the uh, Cleric of Life's Bond. Okay. So Brutal Cathars, not bad. Tovalar can also gain haste, so can I just outright kill my opponents? Seems unlikely. So let's say we Brutal Cathar. Tovalar. And then 
wouldn't necessarily be able to hazard if I want to attack. But this seems like a good starting point. And then... Probably want to get rid of the flyer. Play Tovalar. And then we'll target Tovalar twice. And then... I could keep Stormseeker back so I can cast Hazard as well if they try and double block Caretaker. Now they could also triple block, but... I guess we'll see. Ooh, so we get to punish the double block here. So now I'm glad I waited on Spikefield Hazard. Tovalar draws a card, and next turn, if Tovalar survives, we get to transform a Caretaker. Alright, Cathar can give their Vampire back. But they might still have to exile Tovalar instead. Yep. That's fine. Always have Katilda's activated ability we can use to let it transform to Knight. Piper is good too. Although I'm not hating Katilda's ability. And then for now, play a land and can move to combats. Stormseeker can maybe target itself. Caretaker can target Brutal Cathar. And attack with a team. And then we can still use Katilda to pump. Now, if I pump, I guess they're just dead, so I'll go for it. Otherwise, I might have wanted to keep Katilda back to block Brutal Cathar with the protection from werewolves. And then we could have uh, still pumped in the opponent's turn after transforming. But our opponent was kind of between a rock and a hard place there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands got potential. Naturalist can ramp into Piper, which can hopefully put a Caretaker in play if all goes according to plan. Unlikely to happen that smoothly, but one can hope. Up against Mono White, so not the best matchup for Thalia. Just want to keep hitting my land drops. Turn to Aspirin's gonna hit pretty hard. Alright, land is good. Still probably play Naturalist in hopes of playing a Piper next turn. And then we gotta dodge Skyclave Apparition or Brutal Cathar. Adlin also hits very hard. Block the token. Alright, we drew the land, so might be worth it to go all in here, attack with a naturalist, and then be able to play Piper, and if they can't remove it, next turn we get to live the dream. I think I go for it. That's why we built the deck. And there's a chance our opponent respects a pump spell here, because this is a strange attack. Opponent takes it, so... Cross our fingers, no apparition or brutal Cathar. I'll take 10 damage, I don't care. Aspirin triggers. Ok, 
can still block the 1-1. One, one. We're at 7. Please let the Piper live. I suspect if they had removal, they would have removed it before attacking. Welcoming Vampire. You can have it. And there we go, Huntmaster. Okay. Activate Piper. Put in a Caretaker. Put in a Huntmaster. Put some counters on... Naturalist, maybe. Pass. Transforms to Knights. Trigger Howler. And find another Caretaker, sure. Or maybe one to Cathar to answer the Flyer. We got to live the dream. If we're putting Cassu spells to flip it back to daytime, we can use the Piper again. And there's Thalia, sure. So the only threat here is Welcoming Vampire, which we can now answer with Brutal Cathar. And then Tovalar can make it so it transforms back to Knight next turn. So let's Piper Brutal Cathar. Piper Tovalar, I guess. Could also attack with a Naturalist to then put in an Arsonist's second main. I guess that's also reasonable. Especially if I put two counters on it. So this can attack. Probably keep on Master back. Draw a card. Put in arsonists. Well, this is quite satisfying. Now I could still die to a mole of the skyclaves, unfortunately. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I guess if I played my own Thalia, mole of the skyclaves would have cost five, and if they didn't have a land, they might not have been able to play it. But yeah, even if they can cast two spells, it would flip back to nighttime. And then next turn, the caretaker puts two counters on the entire team, and our opponent should be very much dead. All right, so it took a long time to finally see the Piper in action, but we got to live the dream against Mono White. Now, I still cannot really recommend playing this deck in ranked, since it's going to have a pretty hard time beating most control strategies. Any deck playing Doomscar or Blood on the Snow, even Meat Hook Massacre in the main deck, can often wipe away our entire board, even if we have our entire board protected with Hexproof from Caretaker. So, it's not going to have a good time against control strategies. Epiphany decks can also usually combo off, and uh, they usually have enough removal to deal with an early Thalia if that shows up, so that's not necessarily going to win us the game. And then against Mono Whites, we can certainly win, especially with an early Spike Field Hazard as interaction, but even Mono White has a lot of removal between Brutal Cathar and Skyclave Apparition, so the Piper is unlikely to survive and be able to cheat those six drops into play, which also get punished by cards like Elite Spellbinder, exiling it, making them cost eight. So there are many factors that keep the deck from being competitive, but if you do get to live the dream of activating a Piper and putting those six drops in play, there's almost no greater feeling in standard. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.